Good morning again, everybody. So today we're going to talk about a stiff neck. Now, perhaps you have woken up in the morning after a bad night and had a stiff neck, or perhaps a headache to go with that, or perhaps being so stressed that the stress goes up your neck, giving you a stiff neck and a headache, or perhaps you have slipped on the ice and caught yourself and in so doing given yourself a stiff neck. We often get a stiff neck. And the passage that we're going to read today talks about a stiff neck. We read from Exodus 32. And the Lord is speaking. He says, They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made themselves a molded calf and worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, This is your God, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, and indeed it is a stiff-necked people. So the scriptures talk about this stiff neck, but it's not the stiff neck in a physical way, but a stiff neck in a spiritual way. All of the scripture is talking about our own lives and about how it applies. So what is this spiritual stiff neck that we as people can get? If we think about having a stiff neck in physical terms, having a, a stiff neck really stops us moving. Right? We can't really see behind us. It's a whole body movement. And if, especially if we're sitting on a chair and somebody is behind us, that's, that, that's very difficult to, to see them. It's almost got to get out your chair to look behind you when you have a stiff neck. So there's what's being described as this difficulty in moving. We have a physical difficulty in moving with a physical stiff neck, but spiritually we can also find ourselves not being able to move in spiritual ways, being stuck and resisting the movement in spiritual terms. And this is what the Lord is talking about, that we are stiff-necked when it comes to our spiritual lives. We battle to move sometimes when it comes to spiritual things. Some examples. What are some examples of how this stiff-necked spiritual living comes into our lives? Think about being comfortable. Being comfortable with life. Being comfortable with where I am. Being comfortable with who I am. And think about any thing that challenges that comfort, any th new ideas that come along, we feel discomfort. We want to stay in that comfortable place, and if change comes our way, we resist it. We want to be comfortable. So at first, f being comfortable doesn't seem like a negative, but comfort resists change. And if we go to the Scriptures, the Scriptures spoke about turning off the path that the Lord is calling us to and making a molded calf or making an idol for ourselves. So what is that idol? When we are feeling comfortable, what is that idol that we are worshipping instead? When we are feeling comfortable and resist any change, that idol that we have is our own intellect. We're judging for ourselves that we are just okay where we're at. We are judging for ourselves that we don't need to change. And so that idol is our own intelligence. I don't need to change. But if we go to the Lord's Word, the Lord's Word teaches all about change and constant change and constant work and constant living life in new ways. So comfortable is resisting change when the Lord is talking and asking 
for change in our spiritual life. Another example is holding on to our own perspective on something. We all do it. We all have our understanding of what's happening in the world, of politics, of all sorts of things, and we hold on to those ideas and we're unwilling to let go. We're unwilling to compromise. We're unwilling to hear the other side of the story. We hold on to what we see as right and others are then wrong. And so the idol that we end up worshiping is the idol of superiority. I am more important than you. There's a self, that selfishness, lifting ourselves up and putting others down. When we hold on and aren't open to listening and hearing and trying to understand what others are saying, then we're being stiff-necked. Another example of being stiff-necked is when we think about all the planning that we do in our natural lives. We plan for financial things, we plan for holidays, we plan for our kids, we plan for all sorts of things. The daily routine, everything is nicely planned. And when something comes along and challenges that plan, say for example, COVID, then our whole world is thrown into disarray. All our holiday plans, our summer break plans are just vanish. And that change impacts us. Right? It's hard to accept that change. We want our plans to work. And when things aren't working according to our plans, we get upset and we get angry and we fight with people. We want our plans. We want to live our life on our terms. But that's not the Lord's way. The Lord's way is constant change, constant moving. And so by holding on to our own plans, we're holding on to control. The idol that we're worshiping is trusting in self rather than trusting in the Lord. So these are some examples of how we are the stiff-necked people when it comes to our spiritual lives. We find it difficult to turn away from where we're at to follow the Lord. And so we're constantly slipping off the path. We want to follow the Lord, and then we slip off that path. I want to read to you from the teachings for the new church, from the book Heaven and Hell. It says, and it's describing this stiff-necked people. And behold... It is a stiff-necked people, means that they do not receive the inflow from the Lord. The neck means the joining together and communication of things above and those things below, and so means influx. So when we think about a neck, we think about it in spiritual terms, it's that communication that happens between the Lord and us, or between heaven and and our lives. When our lives correspond or, or our lives are in a heavenly state, then we're able to receive what is heaven, heavenly, or receive what is the Lord's. But when our life is off in a different direction, then we are cutting ourselves off from that r receiving of the Lord and His kingdom. Stiff means that which resists and rejects, and so means that which does not receive. The people are called such here because their interests lay in external things and not in what was internal. So we have a love for the things of this world, and we have a love for ourselves. And those are the externals that we love the most. We love honor and reputation and gain. Right? We love material wealth and material happiness. These are the things that we love and we, we work for and we're trying to plan for in our daily lives. But it cuts us off from the flow of the Lord. We resist that. We reject that. We reject the Lord when we're in these selfish states. 
So why don't we just turn to the Lord? Why don't we just change our ways? Well, we've probably all tried that, and we've probably all failed. But the first place that we've got to start is to recognize and acknowledge that perhaps we're already off the path and we don't even know it. Or perhaps we have slipped off the path so many times that we're about to give up on following the Lord. Or perhaps we've slipped off the path and we've not really had the energy or the inclination to get back onto the path of spiritual growth and following the Lord. So the first thing we've got to realize and acknowledge is that we make these mistakes, that we fall off the path. And then we've got to go to the Lord in humility. Humility, thinking less of ourselves, realizing that we don't have the answers. My intellect doesn't know. I cannot control things. I do not rule over other people. But it is the Lord who is the way the truth, and the life. That in Him are all the good things. So approaching the Lord in humility, but also having some compassion on ourselves, of understanding that where we start is in a broken place. We can't expect ourselves to be perfect when we're not there. We're all broken people. We all fall off the path. We all do selfish things. We are stiff-necked people. That's where we're starting at. And the Lord wants us to try and change and try and follow Him. And so we walk that path. We try and do what He asks. First, by rejecting the things that are selfish and then trying to do what is good. But the hells don't leave us alone. The hells see us departing and they immediately want to draw us back into that selfishness. And so we might start walking the right path and find ourselves slipping off. An example, we volunteer to help. We want to volunteer at church, we want to volunteer within the community, or perhaps at work, anywhere, anywhere where we want to give freely of what we have. And in our minds, we know from the Lord that it should be a, a wonderful, joyful experience. We, need to, we should be giving and sharing and giving of our creativity and our energy. And that's the, the feeling that we go in with. That's the intentions that we start a different path with. But while we're doing those things, while we're trying to volunteer, so the hells want to draw us back into those selfish things, and they start to stir within us those desires for control. Well, these things aren't going my way. Well, what about my ideas? Well, th this, this, this isn't what I'm comfortable with. And we start falling back into those selfish ways. And what should have been a fun, joyful giving of our gifts becomes a frustrating and even upsetting uh, giving that we're doing. And we're not giving from love, but we're giving because we feel we have to. We don't have an option, and we start to resent what we're doing. So starting to live a good way and then the hell's drawing us back into those selfish things. Another example. Our intention is to build a more loving relationship, whether that's with our spouse, with a friend, with children, whoever it might be. We want to build a more loving relationship with them. And the Lord's way is that we get to know them. We get to understand them more. We hear their thoughts and their dreams and their fears and their anxieties and we understand and we listen to them and then we try and be a part of their life moving forward. That's the good intention. And as we start down that path, so the hells then stir up within us the desire and the need for control or saying this is too hard or 
start, we start measuring ourselves. Well, if I'm putting in this amount of effort, are they putting in the same amount of effort for this relationship? And we start measuring ourselves, judging. And what started out as good intention to build a relationship gets pulled back into selfishness of judgment. Another example is our own spiritual growth, our own spiritual work. We know from the Lord that it is to actively reach out to others who are outside of our comfort zone, outside of our family, outside of our friends. Reach out, and the more we reach out, the more we are loving. But that's uncomfortable, and so we don't. We resist the change. We resist reaching out. We, we resist that loving other people because it's, it's more comfortable to stay where I am. It's more comfortable to stay doing the things that I'm comfortable doing. And so we fail. We all fail. We are the stiff-necked people. We are the broken people. But that's the work that we are called to do. That is the journey that we're all on together. So when we find ourselves in these moments of, of, of selfishness, when we were intending to do something good, we were trying to help other people, and we find ourselves in these moments of selfishness, of thinking about me and my comfort, we've got to stop and recognize we've slipped off the path. That selfishness rises up so quickly. That selfishness to, to hang on to my ego, my ways, my ideas, my perspectives. Recognize where there is control. Where am I trying to control things? Where is that control causing anxiety and stress in my life? Where is the, my love of self-intelligence getting in the way so that I can't see the other side of the story, that I can't see what another person is trying to say and how they feel. So stop. See where we're going wrong and then humbly go back to the Lord. Go back to where it all starts, which is His Word. Go back to His Word because in His Word and through the stories that He, he shares with us, there are life principles. In those stories, He helps us identify those selfish aspects of our life, and He also shows us the new way. So going back to His Word, knowing that I'm not in control, that I don't know everything, and that I need to put myself aside. And in the effort that we put into pushing those aside, it is the Lord who turns us. It's the Lord who turns us. And so all we can do is, is fight against those selfish things in us, turning, pushing them away and away and away. And we will try and we will fail. And we will try and we will fail. And we will try and we will fail. And that's the process. If every time we fail, we're going back to the Lord's Word and back to the Lord's Word and back to the Lord's Word, then we're going to the right place where we can learn new things, learn from our mistakes, and try again. Because the wonderful thing about the Lord's creation is it's a perpetual new creation. Everything is new every moment. And so the Lord creates every moment new for you to choose to try again, to choose to push something away, an evil away, a selfishness away, and try instead to follow in His way. Every moment is a new moment. Amen.